Hello, my most amazing artists. Let's go for the letter M. All right, I've got some fun ones for this one. Um, I have a moose. Wow, look at that. That is pretty cool. Sorry, I'm bumping the table. I'm trying to sit back in the chair. I'm not sure how I'm going to start this. Uh, and the antler got damaged. I had to use some really strong hot glue to glue it back on. I don't know which side. I think this side is, is kind of fun. So with a larger animal like this, I'm definitely going to have to start with that main body shape. A lot of times if you draw the rib cage first, that gets you going where you need to go. And you know, I can erase lines later. So I'm drawing really lightly. Okay, got that main body shape first. Now I'm gonna go up for the head shape. Oh my goodness, those antlers are gonna be really challenging. <laughs> you guys know I love you, right? Because <laughs> this is not easy to do and I'm on camera, which is makes me really nervous, I don't know. You think I'd be used to it by now doing this for over a year, but no, it does not really get any easier. All right, then I'm gonna work, I'm gonna save the antlers for, I'm gonna build up my confidence doing these legs first and then go for the antlers. <laughs> okay, let's see here, big feet. So I'm guessing they have, they walk on stuff that moves around, uh, probably snow. Most animals um, are equipped to their environment, their habitat that they are normally found in. I believe that this is God's design for animals and I think it is amazing. You may believe something different. Oh, we don't wanna get your hiney too big, Mr. Moose. Or your back feet too big. I might have to go back and fix that. Old stumpy tail, back leg. Thankfully, a lot of these animals are simplified, which is why I enjoy drawing them so much. Okay, so this is a little too thick. There we go. Go in there and erase. And I knew that because I can see this negative space right there. That's how I knew the leg was a little bit too thick. There's lots of kind of cheats like that that you can do. You just you just start looking for things. You're like, oh yeah, I didn't do that. And that just comes with experience. Don't beat yourself up if you don't, you know, know those things right away. I've drawn lots of four-legged animals. And like most girls, was completely obsessed with horses growing up <laughs> and drew horses all the time. Okay. Um, that's our front leg. Now we're gonna draw this back leg. Remember to make the back leg shorter to make it look like it's behind, and that's just a perspective thing. There we go. I didn't do that too well here. Let me make this a little bit shorter. And Abby's making a lot of noise. Sorry, you guys. She's just up here hanging out with me, but sniffing around at stuff. Okay. All right, that is a big animal, my goodness. Mises, mooses. <laughs> okay, so now I've got to deal with these antlers, wow. All right, so let's see, let's place the eye, just the tip of the eye here. My antler's coming over it. I'm gonna draw the bottom first. I'm gonna kind of anchor it in. Oh, it's gonna go over my letter. No! Oh no! Oh, I've never had to move my letter. Oh, you guys. <laughs> and look how dark, I wrote it so darkly because I didn't think I was gonna have to move it. Ugh, if you learn anything from this, please learn to draw it light and then go back and make it darker. <laughs> That's why right there. Okay, so I've drawn this bottom and now I'm just gonna go around and draw these little kind of finger-like things. And you know what? I might not draw all of them. It just depends. If I skip one, oh hey, it worked. Let's say if I skip one, I'm not gonna freak out about it. Okay, now there's another antler behind this one, but there's also the ear I've gotta deal with. So I'm gonna come down here and do the ear. Just talking, my, I'm just telling you my process, talking you through this. 
And then I see this antler back here. And I see a little bit of it up there. Not very much. Oops. My, oh, and my eraser slipped down inside my pencil, so I'm not erasing very well. All right, let me finish drawing the eye. Which looks funny. Hmm. Yeah, see, my eye is too far away from the antler base. Okay, I'm going to get another eraser. All right. So let's try that again. Also, this needs to come down and out just a little bit. So my eye is right by my antler. Oh yeah, that looks a lot better. Isn't it amazing what just a tiny, tiny little fix like that can make? I mean, it, just the change it makes in your drawing can be really awesome. That's why I say don't give up. And if you're drawing something really hard and you find yourself getting really frustrated with it, leave it and you can come back to it the next day. And oftentimes when I come back to things the next day, I see exactly where my mistake was or exactly what I, I know exactly what I need to fix. And that is super helpful. Okay. Whew. Big one done. <laughs> but not the hardest one because I've got this monkey. And this is the cutest little spider monkey ever. I love monkeys, you guys. So I'm going to draw her. She has a baby. I'll show it. You probably can see it on the camera. Um... So I'm gonna start with her body, which is just like this, pretty easy. Then quite a big head. And then these, oops, it's kind of hard to hold this still. These little legs coming out and the arms. And the face. And the little ears. And the little details for the mouth and the eyes. So cute. And the little tiny neck. And what kind of looks like a belly button. But um, all mammals have belly buttons. You might not be able to see them very well. But they do. I know where Abby's is because when I scratch her belly, I can feel it. I'm sure Spooky has one. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't really looked for it. Okay. Oh, my arms are off. I like this arm. I don't like this one. This one looks really huge and muscular. Like maybe this monkey is going to arm wrestle another monkey. <laughs> So I'm going to try to make it a little bit smaller. There we go. Oh, man, not too small, though. Okay, there we go. That's better. Now the legs. And these big feet. And then her little tail, and I say her because she has a baby. And um, a lot of monkeys with really long tails have what's called a prehensile tail. Prehensile means that they can use their tail to grab onto things like tree branches. They can use their tail to pick things up, like sticks or bananas, which I think is really cool. Okay, there's our monkey mama. Now let's meet our monkey baby. And look, it can actually go onto the back of the mom, which I think is so adorable. Um, but right now I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna draw it like this. It's so little and cute. So I'm gonna start with its body. Oh, I better back it up a little bit. Okay, start with its body. Okay. It's 
little ears and its big head. Oh, it's so cute, you guys. I love monkeys. I love spider monkeys. They're my favorite. When I go to the zoo, I go see the giraffes and I go see the spider monkeys. I enjoy lots of other animals too, but those are my favorites. Oh, and my kids went to the zoo with my uh, mom over spring break and they said that there was gonna be a new baby giraffe soon. But one of the giraffe mamas is pregnant and that is so exciting. These little eyes. Oh gosh, this is so hard to draw. This is so tiny. Okay, there, <laughs> that's good enough. Woo, okay, oh my goodness. All right, next, we have a meerkat, which lives in Africa. Among, and it's it's very, reminds me a lot of a prairie dog, which we have that native to Oklahoma. I don't know if they are related. I imagine that they are somehow, you know what I mean? So, prairie dogs are a little smaller. They're definitely more round. Probably more related to like a groundhog or something. So I'm trying to get the body down first, but this is kind of difficult. This one is... Ooh, not easy. Okay, there we go. Everything I've drawn on here so far is a mammal. You know, I told you I like those the best. So they are all warm-blooded. They all have fur or hair. They all give birth to live babies and they all make milk for their babies. Okay. Mammals are not the biggest class of animals on earth. Actually, that one belongs to insects. <laughs> not a big fan, but that's okay. Okay, there's a, you know, I've drawn a better meerkat, I'm sure. I don't know if I've ever drawn a meerkat, actually, <laughs> but there we go. That's good enough. All right, my last two are teeny, teeny, tiny. I have a mole and a mouse, so I'm just going to draw those from a bird's eye view, and you can just watch me. It should be pretty easy. I'm just going to do like an outline of their little bodies. And if you can imagine, the mouse was the thing that got lost the most in my classroom. <laughs> I've probably bought five or six mice over the years just because they are so tiny, they get lost. All right, there's a mouse. And the mole. For some reason, my moles never really got lost, even though I have several of them. A lot of these animals I have more than one of, mostly because when you're buying Playmobil animals, it is easier and cheaper to buy them off eBay in what is called a lot, L-O-T, a lot, is when someone just throws a whole bunch of stuff together and auctions it off. So if you are looking for these animals, search Playmobil animal lot. <clears throat> and a lot of times the auctions are cheaper, you get a whole bunch of animals, you can get a whole bunch of animals at once, and that's how I've built my collection. Now, a lot of times I'll have to go in, like for instance, if I've lost all my mice and I'll just have to buy a mouse, and that's when it starts getting expensive because this might be a dollar, but then I might have to pay two or three dollars just to have it shipped to me. So that's four dollars for a mouse. So I really don't like to buy them individually. Um, I really like to buy them in lots because then I have extras and sometimes you get some really cool stuff. So that's really what works for me. Okay, let's see, how should we do the moose? I think I'll do this really, I don't know what my dog is doing. <laughs> she's breathing really, really hard. I think she's trying to tell me something. <laughs> she's like, why are we in here? You need to be downstairs taking me for a walk. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
Oh, I should put this here. This isn't quite the same color, but it's hot up here, so I'm probably not gonna do a lot of color matching today. I'm just gonna get as close as possible. There is nothing wrong with that. One thing I like to do to make my coloring look good is make sure I'm going all the same direction. This can be hard to do. You have to get used to staying in those lines. So it can be difficult. One trick that I like to do is these legs that are behind the legs that we're seeing, like this one here and this one here. If you'll make them darker, that will make it look like they're uh, in the background as well. That kind of tells your eye that's in shadow, that's behind that. Just another little trick to help your stuff look good. Because that's what we want you to do. We want, um, I want you to do, I want you to have art that you're proud of. I want you to try new things. I want you to take chances on things. Okay, so now I'm gonna darken up those two legs by just putting another layer. I'm pressing down a little bit harder. There we go. I just want to give you all of the things I know that I've learned over the years of a, being taught by amazing, amazing teachers, and B, learning stuff on my own, and C, watching other artists work. All right, let's finish. Ooh, it's getting hot up here, you guys. I can't turn the air conditioner on because it's a window unit and it's really loud and you won't be able to hear. So, I am sweating for you guys. <laughs> I can't be downstairs in my regular studio because my husband and my son are down there and they're playing Minecraft and they're extremely loud. I don't know what they're doing. They're trying to mine stuff and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> they're playing together on a private server, which is really fun probably, with a bunch of their friends, mostly <clears throat> my husband's friends. They all really enjoy playing with Harrison, my son. Um, mainly because a lot of them don't have kids, and so they like to spend time with our kids, which is fun. Okay, let's see. Almost done. Almost done. I don't have any stories about moose, thankfully, because <laughs> they're really big. Uh, I will tell you, stay away from wild animals. <laughs> Okay, don't have any other, other animals that are this color, so I'm gonna put this color by my box. And I'm gonna bring out this wonderful tan color that I used for some animals in the last video, and I'm gonna use it to make my Mrs. Antlers. Aren't these magnificent? Although, man, would you think that the moose would have a headache? I don't know. Maybe antlers aren't very heavy, I'm not really sure. Okay, I hate that I had to go over my original M and that it didn't erase all the way, but you know what? That just reminded me to make sure I don't draw so hard <laughs> in case I have to erase it. So, all right, my other animal that is this color is basically these two. So I'm gonna go really, really light on my little meerkat friend. So cute. And then I'll go a little bit darker on the monkey. But uh, the monkey's face is kind of yellow. Let me see what I've got for a creamy yellow that might work. Yeah, I'm not crazy about it. No, I'm not gonna go there. That's gonna look bad. I'll just go ahead and make it this light tan in the ears too. And then go in darker to make my monkey's body. Yay, that looks good. Okay, see how many different colors you can get from just pushing down on your pencil in different ways? 
So this is very light, this is medium, and this is pushing really hard. Well, not really hard, but you know, as hard as I feel comfortable doing without breaking it. This monkey's looking seriously muscular, you guys. <laughs> uh. All right. There we go. Okay. Lastly, we've got the baby monkey, which is like a brownish yellow. Um, I call it yellow, it, well, I don't call it that. It's called yellow ochre. So uh, we'll give it a shot. I mean, I'm gonna have to go in with a yellow and then put a brown over it, probably use that tan. There's not a yellow ochre in this box of colored pencils and that is a super handy color. Really, really, really handy because there's a lot of things in nature that are kind of a brownish yellow. There's hardly, only really flowers are this yellow, yellow color. Okay. That's not too bad. Maybe we need to do a little orange, but eh. Okay, lastly, we've got the mouse and the mole. Da -da -da. So gray and black. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. <laughs> and then we're almost done with these. Okay. And I only have one gray. So it looks like it's actually pretty close to the mouse's color. So woohoo. Win for us. I hope you feel comfortable going back and drawing some of these animals. They sure are a lot of fun. And let me write our letter at the top, but move it over a little bit. And there we go. There's our animals for the letter M.